Hey guys, John Jr. here, bringing you guys another BBR video. This week is week six, and we are playing Dell D Double, who you can check out down in the description below. I love Dell. Dell is a great guy. However, I am going to beat Dell into the ground because I have to, because now I'm three and two, and I would like to end the season six and two. So I don't know if you guys have noticed, I'm a level with you guys because all of you guys that watch these team builders are the coolest people. Only about 25% of the people that watch my videos watch the team builders. So to that, I just have to say, you guys are the best. Don't let the other people know that, but you guys are my favorites. That being said, I'm going to level with you guys. I have thrown both of our losses away and it's been all me, all me. And there's nothing I can say or do to say anything else. What are my words? What? I can't say anything else about that other than the fact that I have thrown those games away. It is all me and I cannot blame anybody but myself. If I just focus up, I know I'm a good player. You guys know I'm a good player. Clearly, apparently you guys go to bat for me a whole lot in Poke Game streams. I watch the replays and I really appreciate that. But I know I'm a good player, so I have to just start mentally focusing a little bit better and stop throwing these games away. Stop going, well, if I do this play, I could win. But what's the repercussions? And I have to remember that. So this week, that's what I'm gonna do. Focus up. We're focused up. And we're gonna try to beat Dell here. Dell is 0-5, but that does not mean he does not have a very scary team. Dell's team consists of Roaring Moon, Iron Leaves, Iron Hands, Vaporeon, Staraptor, Arcanine, Worst Sandaconda, Mimikyu, Pinkurchin, Amoongus, and Cryogonal. So a couple notes with Dell's team. The first thing that you will notice looking at his team, he does not have a remover. His remover is Cryogonal, which is not a real remover in this matchup. I have Goldingo, which walls it until the end of time. So I'm going to try to take advantage for one of the first weeks, not try to tunnel vision this time, but try to take advantage of the fact that he doesn't have removal. I'm going to be obviously a lead stash glamour. We'll talk about a little bit later, but I'm going to try to get hazards up and try to use the fact that he does not have not only that many good removers, but not that many Pokemon that want to run boots to my advantage. As far as his Pokemon go, I think there are three threats to our team and three threats only, and that is going to be Roaring Moon, Iron Leaves, and Iron Hands. I actually do think Pinkurchin comes into this matchup just because of the implications of Iron Leaves plus Iron Hands into me with the uh, the terrain. I think Pinkurchin sucks into me. I think it's not a good Pokemon here, but I do think he brings it. As for the other two Pokemon, I think it is super up in the air. I think he could bring a Spadaf Arcanine potentially for that Goldango. He could bring an Amoongus, but that gets hard walled by our Goldango. I think he could bring Mimikyu. I think Mimikyu has an actually pretty good offensive matchup, but at the same time, it doesn't do super, super well. But he could keep the disguise up in the back and that could be scary to potentially revenge our Chi and Pao. So I do think overall we have more Pokemon that do better than Dell. However, Dell's top three Pokemon do very, very well. That being said, week six, we are no different than week one. Our first Pokemon is going to be Chi and Pao. We are going to be Taunt, Ice Shard, Crunch, and Psychic Things. And I think for the first time this season, we are running an offensive item in Life Orb. We're going to be Max Attack Adamant with 120 Defense and 136 Speed. Let's go ahead and knock the basic stuff out right now. We're enough speed to outspeed his Cryogonal. This is because an Ice Shard from a Life Orb Adamant Chi and Pao with our investment after one spike kills a non-Yachi Roaring Moon if he's not invested. So with my game plan of potentially getting more than one spike up as well as potentially a toxic spike i never see a universe where we need to outspeed that roaring moon unless he is yachi but i don't really foresee it happening especially because we could be potentially terra fairy we are then max attack because we don't really need any defensive investment and the rest into physical defense because his top three threats are physical pokemon no special pokemon on his team really exist outside of maybe Vaporeon. I could kind of see Vaporeon coming and then maybe Pinkurchin, man, but I, I think we would probably Oko a Pinkurchin with a Terra Dark Crunch. As far as our moveset, we are taunt for very, very niche scenarios. We have it for a potential late game Mimikyu. We obviously can only break his disguise. We can't go much further than that. I don't want him to potentially get a sword stance up to win the game. So we can taunt to prevent that. We could taunt to prevent a Willow on that Pokemon. And then we could taunt because we don't have a good move to Oko a Mungus. We also have it potentially to prevent a wish vaporeon i don't know necessarily if that's going to come but that is something else that we could taunt we have ice shard specifically because of that roaring moon calc that i talked about earlier i think that it's really good on top of that ice is just a really good type in this matchup i did prioritize priority ironically because of things like potential speed boosting iron leaves and uh, obviously the potential dragon dance or booster energy roaring moon we are terra dark crunch because he has no switch ins actually i lied he has one switch in and that's going to be iron hands which does not take a life orb terra dark crunch into psychic things i do do 
think it is very likely that he is Roselli Berry on this Iron Hands. We are Terra Fairy, and honestly, Terra Fairy looks fantastic in this matchup. It helps us against a potential Iron Leaves. It helps us against a potential uh, Roaring Moon. And you might be thinking I'm crazy for not running it, but the fact that I could just be Life Orb, Terra Crunch, I can get on, in on so many Pokemon, and I can just Terra and Crunch and claim a kill. It's ridiculous. Yes, defensively, Terra Fairy makes so much sense here, but offensively, I think we could just be Terra Dark and start claiming some kills. At the end of the day, this Pokemon is just a breaker, but ideally, we get some spikes up, we get some T spikes up. This is our win con. Our next Pokemon. I, I just want to go ahead and apologize actually while I'm sitting here thinking about it. Our next Pokemon is Goldingo, and at the beginning of the season, I said Goldingo is not a second option. I am sorry, Goldingo. You have been the second Pokemon I have put on just about every single team this season, and I think I've brought you to every single game. I apologize. Goldingo is fantastic. Unlike Quaqua Ball. Anyway, we are Recover, Shadow Ball, D Gleam, and Reflect with 152 HP, 248 Defense, 48 Special Attack, Modest, and 60 Speed. And we are rocking the Colbert Berry this week. So what does Colbert Berry do for me? So at, at the ground level, Goldingo is here specifically to take out a Pokemon. That's normally what his role has been in each of these matchups is to counter one specific Pokemon on the opponent's team. And this week, that's no different. I'm actually very grateful that I made that Iron Leaves competitive analysis video because through that, I found out that Goldingo pretty much stops any variant of Iron Leaves, especially because Dell's Terras are Psychic and Fighting, I'm not sure if I said that. So we have the Colbert Berry for its one move that can hit us in Night Slash as well as a potential Roaring Moon. We are recovered because this Pokemon is going to be a pretty reliable switch into a lot of things like Amoongus, like Staraptor, even potentially Iron Hands. So we are going to get chipped quite a bit, so having recovery is going to be very nice on this Pokemon. We are then Shadow Ball and D-Gleam, D-Gleam to potentially catch a Roaring Moon and then Shadow Ball, he does not have a resist on his team, Staraptor does not exist in this matchup, so I really think that these two coverage moves are going to be fantastic for us. And then lastly, I told you his team was almost entirely physical, I think we can get a Reflect up pretty reliably, it is not going to be the primary function as it was with our Weakness Policy Glamora team, but getting Reflect up to potentially help us in the end game is going to be super nice and just to take some hits, man. We can switch into the Iron Leaves and if he wants to pop our Colbert, maybe he Swords Dance, he Swords Dance Life Orb in terrain. Horrifying, by the way. He Night Slashes us, we take 88%, we throw up our Reflect. The rest of our team doesn't immediately lose and if he wants to kill us, so be it, we can go into something to revenge him. Our Speed EVs allow us to outspeed a Max Speed Iron Hands. Do I think that is likely? No. But just in case it does happen, because Dell could bring some funky stuff against us because he knows how I like to build, we are going to go ahead and outspeed that. Goldingo can also live on EQ from a banded Roaring Moon after Rocks, which actually does more damage to us than Crunch because of the Colbert Berry. And then we just went the rest into Special Attack Modest. This Pokemon is here, again, specifically to take out the Iron Leaves, but it also has more functions because of that Reflect. Our next Pokemon, I told you guys that we were going to bring this Pokemon. It's going to be Glamora, and again, it is going to be Focus Sash probably going to be led depending on the six that he brings but i really don't see a world in which we do not lead this pokemon and then we have spikes sludge wave earth power and mortal spin we have mortal spin because i said pink Urchin could potentially come i still believe that and obviously he could try to hazard stack us we have 96 hp 240 defense 128 special attack modest and 44 speed our evs are really cool because with our evs that i'll talk about in just a second the only thing the only thing that can stop us from leading this pokemon and getting our spike up, getting our T spikes up is going to be anything with Taunt, which I think is Roaring Moon and I think Iron Leaves gets it. I'm not sure if anything else on his team. Oh, Mimikyu too. Those are the three Pokemon that can stop us and I don't think Mimikyu is going to want to break Disguise turn one. So that kind of just leaves two Pokemon and I don't foresee Iron Leaves really staying in on us. I think it's going to be more of a late game Pokemon. So Roaring Moon is really the only Pokemon that can stop us off lead. We hit the same speed stat as Goldengo. I still don't think it's very likely, but I do like being able to always guarantee to outspeed that Iron Hand. And the reason that I was saying that only Taunt can stop us is we can live five hits from a banded scale shot from the Roaring Moon, assuming he's Jolly, which he could totally be adamant in this matchup, but assuming he's Jolly, we guarantee live that. And if that's the case, we get a double T spike up anyway, and if he doesn't have a Moongus, perfect, we're set for the rest of the game. And then we just went the rest into special attack modest. Like I said, this is almost guaranteed going to be our lead. The only thing that might make me reconsider is if he brings Amoongus, but even if he brings Amoongus, we always switch in Goldingo. Stopping Tantrum is not going to do that much damage. Spore into Stopping Tantrum might be a different story, but we can get a Reflect up and we'll be fine. So I think 
Glamora is pretty consistently going to be my lead here. Our next Pokemon is going to be Slowbro. We are going to be just fully physically defensive. Again, this is here because his team is super physically defensive. We are Colbert Berry to alleviate the Roaring Moon. And this Pokemon is just so difficult for him to break through. We are Slack Off, Thunder Wave, Future Sight, and Foul Play. Future Sight forces his Roaring Moon into a lot of uncomfortable situations, and Foul Play allows us to break through the potential Iron Leaves. Thunder Wave also gives us a lot of control over Pokemon like Iron Leaves and Roaring Moon. And unless he's already set up, Iron Leaves does not oko us with a Life Orb Terrain Boosted Leaf Blade most of the time. It's like a, an 88 to 101% roll. There's very little chance that we get okoed by that. So it, Slowbro is here kind of to alleviate pressure off that, but just in general, Slowbro is such a fat wall here. And throwing up Future Sights is going to be very, very valuable. Not only does it force in the Roaring Moon, which potentially helps us with spike damage, but also spreading Thunder Waves is going to be fantastic. Obviously, you'd think the Iron Hands would maybe want to come in on us, but it obviously doesn't want to take a future site so having Slowbro as a nice pivot is going to be fantastic our next pokemon is going to be much of the same i'm sorry first of all first and foremost let me just say this to the one cyclostar fan out there who last week was disappointed i did not bring cyclostar i apologize you were right cyclostar did fantastic in that matchup and maybe even better than kilowattro not sure if i brought it the outcome of the game would have changed but maybe it would have because then i wouldn't have been a sitting duck for the max caliber this week Cyclozar, again, I know you're holding your breath. If you're watching this video, Cyclozar does fantastic. If there was ever a shift gear Cyclozar matchup, it is this one, and there's no doubt about that. Unfortunately, I think I need the six Pokemon I brought more than I need that Cyclozar winning crown. And that holds true with this number five. We are bringing Dashbun. Dashbun is very much needed into a matchup where we are not bringing Terra Fairy Chi and Pao. If we brought Terra Fairy Chi and Pao, I do think Dashbun was not as necessary, but because we are not bringing that, we need Dashbun to not immediately lose to that Roaring Moon. We are again going to be Max Max Fizz Dev, and we are going to be Wish, Protect, Play Rough, and Charm. Charm helps us with not only the Roaring Moon, but also the Iron Hands, because this is our only Pokemon that can take two hits from the Iron Hands. And then we have the leftovers. There's not a whole lot to say about Dash Button here. Hopefully it can do its role pretty well. It's a very physically defensive Pokemon. So if there's any Pokemon that can do it, hopefully it's Dash Button. But Dash Button is just here again, just to wall that Roaring Moon. And then lastly, again, so sorry, Cyclozar fan. We are bringing Kilowattro and we are Specs this week. And this is because he just gets ripped apart by Specs. I needed an, an immediate breaker. And Cyclozar, if I brought it, was going to be Shift Gear Wincon. And Kilowattro is obviously not going to be that. Kilowattro is going to be an immediate break here, exactly what I need. Where you turn Hurricane, Air Slash, and Thunderbolt, he just does not have a flying resist on his team. You look up and down on his team, he just simply does not own one. It's Pink Urchin. That does not count. That just doesn't count. We are Volt Absorb for what it's worth to potentially ever switch in and get a free switch in on that Iron Hands, but Wise Punch does like 140% to us. So don't know how often I'm going to risk that. We have enough speed to outspeed the Roaring Moon guaranteed. We can live a plus two Mimikyu Life Orb Adamant Shadow Sneak after rocks, and then we went the rest in a special attack. The game plan is pretty simple here, guys. We get a spike up and we try to get everything in range of Chi and Pao as quickly as we can. I really like the team that we've built this week. I think that we can absolutely win as long as I remain focused and I'm ready to play Dell. Be sure to check out Dell if you have not already. Hopefully he is in the top right hand corner of your screen right now. And if you made it this far, check this out. We got our shirt. We're going to wear our shirt for the battle. I'm going to talk a little bit more about it in the actual battle, but if you have not already, be sure to pick up a shirt to support your Portland Nightshaders. I expect to go far in the playoffs, hopefully. So if you want to support us while we do that, be sure to pick up a shirt, a hoodie, a muscle shirt even. Pick one of those up down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it as always. And for now, guys, this has been John Jr. signing off.